Hi, this is Breaking Down the Barriers, and we are your hosts, Beverly Reeves and Terry Russell. Today, our guest is Mrs. Rocio Rivera Bryson from El Mundo Newspaper, and she will be sharing information with us on the Back to School Fest, which will be on August the 22nd, right before school starts. This is the second year that AISD has collaborated with El Mundo on this event. And last year, I understand that there were 5,000 people in attendance, and we're hoping to top that number this year. So thank you for joining us, Ms. Rivera. Thank you so much for having me here. Okay, Ms. Bryson. So tell us a little bit about El Mundo and how, the long, how long have the paper been sponsoring the Bad School Fest? Okay, well, El Mundo has been in Austin for 26 years already. And yeah, this is the second, the second year that we're having this event. And we're gonna be sponsoring this event, having all the kids, trying to have the kids to get ready to get back to school. Okay, so where will the event take place? It's gonna be at the Delco Center. The Delco Center is located at 4601 Pecan Brook Drive, it's in Austin, Texas. Okay, and that's over in the LBJ area, by the yes, LBJ High School. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, why are we encouraging parents to attend the Back to School Fest? Well, first, if they were not able to make it to the BASH event, okay. then they would be able to come with us the, week, the weekend after this uh, BASH uh, Fest, right? So, it's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna have uh, for kids and for parents too. Okay, so is there a cost? Is it free? Everything will be free at this event. Everything will be free. And There's so not any cost. What are we trying to do at this event? What, are, what is El Mundo offering at the fest? What's going to be, is there anything different than what they could have saw the week before? What's gonna happen? Well, basically what we're gonna have is, like I said at the beginning, we're trying to help parents to have the kids ready to get back to school. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of activities First, about let's talk about health. We're gonna have immunizations for kids. We're gonna have health screenings. And the thing that I like about this event is that we're gonna have the mobile eye clinic. Okay, so good, the good. kid can come, uh, the, the child can come, and if they need glasses, they will be able to walk home with glasses the same day, and this is free. So the, would the students need to have their parents with them to do they, any of these will, medical screenings? Yeah, they will need to bring their parents, yes. And so what are we offering the parents? Are they just coming to support the kids or is there gonna be anything there for them? Well, of course they, they, they come in to support the kids, but we also gonna have health screenings for, for uh, parents okay. as blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. This is gonna be available also at the same event. Okay. That's good. So El Mundo is a Spanish language newspaper. Um, and so, what audience are you trying to reach? Are you trying to reach just your Spanish-speaking families, or is this event open to everyone? Well, th this uh, our, uh, our newspaper is in Spanish, mm -hmm. but we're trying to reach the bilingual community. We're trying to reach the English community, the Spanish community. Basically, everybody who needs this kind of services, they're welcome to come to the uh, to the event. Okay, so the information provided will be in English and Spanish. It will be in English and Spanish That's great. too. Yeah. That's great. So what programs, um, you talked about the, the health screenings and the mobile eye care clinic. What programs might be offered or what types of exhibitors are gonna be at your uh, back to school fest? Well, we're gonna have uh, more than 50 exhibitors at the fest mm -hmm. and it will be from doctor, doctors, clinics, lawyers. Mm -hmm. Every, uh, we're gonna have a lot of different um, uh, associations that probably they can give services to the family. Mm -hmm. So a lot of community organizations community are going to be there. Community organizations, okay. yes. So um, with regard to the health screenings, um, will families have to have health insurance to, to participate or? No. Okay. That is the good thing. Okay. So if your child doesn't have any insurance, mm -hmm. if you don't have any insurance, this is the best, this is the, the best event you can come and get all that done. Like I say, immunizations wow. and health screenings. Okay. So if I wanted to come and have my blood pressure checked, I mean, I'm actually gonna be there, but 
if I want to have my blood pressure to check when I'm there and I see 5,000 people <laughs> well, coming we, towards me. We expect to have a lot of people, but we also have, um, we also, we are also prepared for that. Okay. So if you come and get and want to get your blood pressure check, come with us. We're going to help you with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think in speaking with you earlier, you mentioned that uh, the children will actually have the opportunity to have a healthy breakfast. Yeah, we're also going to be giving away the healthy breakfast for the kids. Okay. This is something very important, right? So if you didn't give your kids breakfast that morning, don't worry. We're also going to have that. Good. And you're also going to have entertainment at yeah. the event. And I heard, and I didn't get to come last year, and I'm looking forward to it, but tell us what type of entertainment we can expect. Well, we're going to have a lot of giveaways, a lot of raffles. Okay. And we also gonna have our clowns. We always have clowns so kids can have fun. And we're gonna be giving away um, toys. Like, and we're gonna be giving away scooters, bikes. Okay. So it's gonna be also, it's not just gonna be um, something that where the kids are gonna go and get their, their uh, immunizations. No, they also gonna have the opportunity to have fun at oh, our event, good. yeah. Oh good, that's awesome. So it sounds like um, for families who may not have been able to attend the AISD Back to School Bash, that this Back to School Fest is a perfect opportunity for families to be able to still get uh, information and school supplies for their child to help them get prepared to go to school on that following Monday. Yes, yeah. Um, we're going to be giving away also the same uh, backpacks mm -hmm. and school supplies. And yeah, well, this is like their second call. If they were not able to make it to the bash first, they were, they were welcome to come to our event. Okay. So, second call, I think. Yeah. I like second that. call. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, and so you mentioned immunization. So do the students need to bring their shot records? It will be, yeah. They okay. will need to bring that, right? Because they will need a record and see what they need. Okay. And, and I like this one because um, moms don't, don't have to worry the first day of school when they right. bring their immunization records and uh, they notice that they need one or two immunizations for their kids. So they can get everything done this August 22. So who are the vendors, exhibitors? Who are some of the people who are going to be at the event outside of the healthcare providers? Well, like I say, we're going to have different vendors, um, th different exhibitors, like um, doctors, different clinics, different organizations going to this event. We're also um, going to have Blue, Clo Bru Blue Cross Blue Shell of Texas. Okay. They're going to be there with us too. And anyone else going to be there? Well, we are going to have the police, the Austin Police Department. Okay. Oh, okay. And oh, we also want to say thank you to the uh, Austin Independent School District. They're supporting us a lot with this event, too. And I think AISD greatly appreciates the effort that you all are going through to help our communities. So, well, yeah, that, like I said at the beginning, that's something we want to do. We want to give back to the community. We're going to help the community. If uh, they don't have the... Um, the uh, insurance for their kids and they worried about these things well this is the good place to come and get that fixed do you all provide transportation or parents have to get there on their own yeah we and the, at this time we're not providing any transportation well i heard that at the event last year with that the magnitude of people was surprising yeah. and that it was a big multicultural event with not only the Hispanic or the Latino community coming out, but the African American community, the Asian community, the Indian community, just basically everyone showing up at this event and that it was surprising to you all and also amazing. Yeah, it was very surprising to us, of course, to see all, like everybody coming to this event. That's why at this, at this time we wanted to come and present it to you guys. So you can know everybody is welcome to our event. That is awesome. Yes. And that's why it's going to be bilingual this year. It's bilingual. That's good, because I think that people will be more receptive when they know that there's not going to be a language barrier. It is for everyone. Yeah. Good. And so just to recap, the Back to School Fest is when? It's going to be this August 22nd 
from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the location, like I say, it will be Delco Center, 4601 Pecan Brook Drive in Austin, Texas. And this is, uh, sounds like it's gonna be a wonderful, multicultural, bilingual event that will help all of our students get prepared to start the school year ready to go. Yeah, we wanna have everybody there. Everybody's welcome to come. Well, we wanna thank you for joining us. Thank El Mundo newspaper for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you for partnering with AISD. I think this is a wonderful event and it seems like it's just going to give us an opportunity to continue to grow and grow and grow. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having us here. And like I say, we are looking forward to do more events and, and having uh, more and more people coming to our events and well, helping the community more and more. Thank you. Thank you. So, Rocio, we want to thank you and El Mundo newspaper for partnering with AISD. We want to thank you for joining us on Breaking Down the Barriers. And we are going to go to a short break and we'll be right back. And we are back with our second guest, Rose Coleman. She's the project supervisor for AISD's Project Help Program. And thank you, Ms. Coleman, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So for those of us who may not know a lot about the program, what exactly is Project Help? Project Help is a district program that helps campuses and families, it helps campuses comply with what is called the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. It's a federal law that ensures the educational rights of homeless students and students who are living in transitional situations are met. Um, the definition of homelessness under McKinney-Vento is students who are living in motels or hot hotels, um, living in cars, in housing shelters, as well as in overcrowded situations mm -hmm. or uh, substandard situations. They're like two or three families together. Living together in a dwelling that's, you know, built for one, overcrowded situation. And, and so does something have to happen that requires them to live in that situation for them to be defined as homeless or can a family just decide that they're going to live in order to um, be able to afford a certain house that they're going to live stacked up? Uh, no, to meet the definition of homelessness and be eligible under McKinney-Vento for the services of Project Help, uh, it, uh, it is not a voluntary situation. A family moves in with another family to share housing costs um, due to lack of housing or economic hardship. It's not to uh, help with child care or to you know, save up for something else. It's because they do not have the option of getting their own dwelling. Okay. okay. So um, if a student qualifies uh, for services in Project Help, th through Project Help, what services do you actually provide? We help the student um, enroll in school, answer the questions about McKinney-Vento, uh, what school that they are, uh, they can enroll in under the law. Uh, for example, if they are highly mobile and have moved a few times, mm -hmm. but the last school they went to when they were housed, they would like to stay at that school. We help ensure that they are able to stay at the school, that they have transportation to that school, that they have uh, other things they need to be successful, school supplies, uh, school uniforms, okay. uh, uh, funding for field trips, and things like that. And what about um, lunch? Or breakfast. Yes, when um, students are enrolled in our program, we immediately enroll them in the free lunch program. Okay. Um, and so if a family feels like they should qualify for services through Project Help, um, how would they go about um, getting through that process? Well, at the time of enrollment, when parents fill out the enrollment packet, there is a form called the Student Residency Questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And there's a question on the questionnaire that says, is your address temporary due to 
um, economic hardship or lack of housing, loss of housing. If they endorse yes on that form, that form comes to us from the school and we immediately enroll the student in our program. Now, if they become homeless or lose housing and are in a temporary living situation after their student is enrolled, then the best thing to do is go to their school registrar, their school mm -hmm. counselor, call us directly okay. at the district program to be able to take advantage of the services. Okay, so there's not a project help person assigned to every campus per se? Yes, we do have uh, representatives assigned to every campus and every okay. campus can get the parent in touch with the person who okay serves the campus directly. Or they can call Project Help at 414-3690 and we will let you know what person, person can is. help you at that campus. Mm -hmm. So I assume that, um, that serving students in this situation is, is pretty costly. So do you have um, funding just from the district or do you have organizations who help support uh, the services that you provide? We have wonderful organizations that help us. The majority of the funding for the program is through the district as well as what's called a TechShep grant through the Texas Homeless Education Office. But to help support uh, the cost of school supplies, band instruments for homeless students and students living in transition, cheerleader uniforms, uh, the list goes on. We have wonderful donors. Uh, one of them is Cap City Kids who's been helping the program for years. Uh, with a lot of these expenses and uh, Hindu charities and Faith Presbyterian Church. Wow, okay. I know that it's a difficult situation when families are basically homeless, needing help, in transition. Actually, as a parent support specialist, I recall a family's house burning down and having to help them. and. I didn't know about the McKinley-Vento Act at that particular time. So the family was struggling trying to figure out what to do. And amazingly, one phone call to Project Help, we were able to help keep the young lady in the school that she attended and also help provide services for her. So that being said, I think that this is a wonderful program. Great. So tell us, I know times are tough now. What trends are currently happening that are causing people to be homeless now? Over the last 15, 20 years, it's been this kind of perfect storm of lower and lower wages for work, right. um, hard time uh, people finding work, lack of affordable housing, and um, a scarcity of supportive housing programs to as can serve as a safety net, net for people who do lose their housing because of the low wages and lack of affordable housing. So those three things combined have really um, forced a lot of people into some desperate situations, unfortunately. So when a child has to go to school and they're dealing with this situation, how can we teach teachers and staff to be able to understand what's going on and be sensitive to this uncomfortable situation that this family is in? <clears throat> it's very important for teachers and adults who work with uh, children who live in homeless situations on a daily basis to understand the negative consequences that the kiddos face. Because if they understand and can help the child through it and support them, they can mitigate a lot mm -hmm. of these negative consequences. Mm -hmm. Children that live in these situations are often some of the kids that are falling asleep in class. They're sleep deprived right. because of the crisis in which they live. The, they're under a great deal of stress right. constantly. So this is going to show up in the classroom in the form of sadness and maybe some behavioral problems here and there. Kids in these situations are, when compared to their peers, they're sick more often. Mm -hmm. The overcrowded situations promote the spreading of disease. So there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of challenges for these kids and the more adults that can help these kids through it, the better. 
Is there counseling provided by Project Health for children who are going through these issues? We can refer uh, families and students to counseling in the community. Okay. So we're able to refer for a lot of different, to get a lot of different need met, needs met, food banks, counseling, medical services. Okay. So children who are in this homeless situation, they may not fit what we stereotypically think of as someone who's homeless. We are probably walking around with the idea of the people who are on the corner with their cans, with their signs. Or in a shelter. Or in a mm -hmm. shelter, you know. What does a child look like? How do we identify this? If a kid doesn't come forward, if a family doesn't come forward. A lot of families and students don't come forward because they don't realize they do meet the definition. Right. And uh, 60 per to 70 percent of students that meet the definition of homelessness are in these doubled up, overcrowded situations. A lot of people think because you have a roof over your head, you're fine and you have what you need, but we know and research shows that is not the case because those negative consequences I was telling, talking about earlier with the stress and the deprivation. Mm -hmm. So many times teachers and adults, they don't realize that these doubled up circumstances have just as many negative consequences. A lot of times the kids that live in shelters and motels do. So that's how they don't necessarily meet the image that we all have in mind. We may overlook the kid that he and his siblings and mother have moved in with the grandparents and think everything's mm -hmm. fine. Well, if it's a two bedroom home, yeah. these kids are going to be facing a lot of challenges. Oh, well, or yes. if a student continues to come to school late yes, uh, because they don't know that they can get transportation and parents don't want to tell anybody that they're now in a homeless situation. Yes. If staff can be um, mindful of what to look for and finally a counselor asked, you know, why, you know, what's going on? Yes. And they found out that they had been, they had lost their home due to the father no longer being employed. So right. now they were staying right. with a grandparent who lived far away, but they didn't want to let anybody know because they thought they wouldn't be able to continue Going attending to the school. To right. And it's very important for families to try not to have a sense of shame over these circumstances. Mm -hmm. They are far from alone. Uh, losing stable housing can happen to any Anybody. one of us. We yes. worked with over 2,600 students last year in this situation. Families are that not alone amount. in this, and it is nothing to be ashamed of. There are many people in this community and in this district, droves and droves of people who want to help. That's, it's awesome to know that. So with that being said, we know that that means that's what you're gonna be providing at the bash, information so that people will be aware of the fact that there is help out there. Absolutely, we're gonna have a table set up at the bash. I'll be there, we'll have pamphlets, um, tons of information, um, be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with anybody, answer questions, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's going to be a way for students and family to learn about the McKinney-Vento Act and maybe they will reach out. Absolutely. Absolutely. You might be surprised at how many families actually qualify and didn't even know it. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of families out there I believe who remain unidentified because mm -hmm. of uh, the knowledge is not widespread of the criteria. So the more people that know the better. The more people we can help, that's what we're here for. Do you all have trainings with the organizations like the Family, the family Support Services, Parent Support Specialists, to just kind of give them an idea of what this looks like and how they can help families? Absolutely, we have an annual trainings coming up uh, in August 6th where we work with campus-based personnel to present information about McKinney-Vento and answer all the questions that they have about processing enrollment for homeless students. I just, I think it's wonderful because, you know, being a parent support specialist, I'm not now, but knowing that we have parents who have to deal with that and children who have to deal with that, 
it is a struggle and it's heart wrenching. It just kills you to know that someone's going through that struggle and not knowing that there is a someone out there to help them. Absolutely, and that many people have come before them and reached out for help and did really well in school. Worked last right. year with uh, many seniors who went on to college facing many obstacles and challenges. We were able to help them link with other funders that could help them. Um, you can have a bright future regardless of your circumstances. And um, I just can't stress it enough to, to always reach out for help, and that's what we're there for. Well, we want to thank you for doing what you do, and we also want to thank you for joining us today on Breaking Down the Barriers to Share information about Project HELP, and we hope that people realize that this agency, this organization is available and that you're here to help. Yes. So thank you for joining us today on Breaking Down the Barriers. This has been Terry Russell and Beverly Reeves. Join us the first and third Monday of each month on KZI FM 88.7 or KZIFM.org and on AIS TV blog and on Channel 22 every Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 and Sundays at 10.30. Follow us on Twitter at AISD underscore BDD, BDB. Like us on Facebook and also reach out to us at www. .austinisd.org Thank you.